Let's discuss goal-directed echocardiography and how to obtain the full goal-directed examination image set. The examination starts by placing the probe in the parasternal position. The indicator on the probe would be pointed in general towards the patient's right shoulder. Then with small movements, angling and tilting, and even moving the probe a little bit, then the parasternal long axis view of the heart is obtained. There are certain rules that you'd want to follow in obtaining this image. We call it the DAG rule set. First is the depth set correctly. And the way to do that is by adjusting the depth control in order that the target image is in the center of the screen. The machine function is optimized when the target is set in the center of the screen. The next step is to orientate the axis correctly. In the parasternal long axis view, the examiner needs to line the aortic valve, the mitral valve, and the largest possible LV cavity size along one axis, one tomographic axis. And this requires very gentle manipulation of the probe, again, angling, tilting, even moving it. And we've obtained a good quality image in this case. Finally, the examiner will gain the image. So it's not too bright, not too dark. In some ways that's subjective, um, but in general, the inexperienced scanner will tend to overgain. The gain is well set in this image. Let's go over the structures that we're looking at. First, we have the left atrium, followed by the left ventricular cavity. Then we have the right ventricular outflow tract. The mitral valve is well seen here, as is the aortic valve, and part of the ascending aorta is also visible. The information that the examiner derives from this as a goal-directed echocardiographer is first LV function. We note significant area change between diastole and systole, and of course this would be normal. The morphology of the aortic valve and the mitral valve are both normal, and the right ventricular outflow tract is not dilated, nor is there a pericardial effusion. The effusion would be found circumferential to the heart if it's moderate or large, or just um, posterior to the heart if it's a small pericardial effusion. Because goal-directed echocardiography is essentially a qualitative analysis of cardiac function, only the advanced critical care echocardiographer would make formal measurements derived from M mode or a much color Doppler analysis of valve function. The second mandatory view for the goal directed image set would be the parasternal short axis view. The examiner rotates the probe from the parasternal long position to the short position to 90 degrees clockwise without moving, angling, or tilting the probe. And they obtain a image of the left ventricle at the papillary muscle level. Once more, the depth is well set. The axis is appropriate at papillary muscle level, and the gain is also appropriate. This view identifies the left ventricular cavity, the septum, and the pericardial area, which is circumferential to the heart. The RV, the right ventricle, is not seen its entirety because a rib shadow blocks visualization of the right ventricular free wall. The right ventricle is, though, crescent-shaped, which would be typical of the normal right ventricle. The next mandatory view is the apical four-chamber view. The probe is moved to um, examine the heart from the apical position. The examiner has changed the scanning plane completely, so no longer is it down towards the heart through the anterior chest, but rather is coming around for a completely orthogonal view, looking at the long axis of the heart. The depth is appropriate. The axis requires that the tomographic plane goes through the apex and the midpoint of the tricuspid and mitral annulus. Ideally, the septum should be orientated in the um, middle of the screen, straight up and down. Let's go over the structures. We have the left ventricular cavity, the left atrium, separated by the mitral valve. On the right side, we see the right ventricle, the tricuspid valve, and the right atrium. 
surrounding the heart would be the pericardial space, which is virtual in this situation because there's no pericardial effusion. The main purpose of this view from the point of view of the goal-directed echocardiographer is to compare the size of the right ventricle to the left ventricle. This is qualitative in analysis, and if the RV is smaller than the left ventricle, less than 60% of its end diastolic size compared to the left ventricle, that's normal between 60 and 100% of the size of the left ventricle. That would be moderate RV dilatation. And if the RV is larger by 100% or more than the LV, that would be considered severe enlargement, strongly suggestive of corpomenale as a cause of the shock state. Generally speaking, the best apical four view is found with the patient in a left lateral decubitus position. Uh, when possible in the critically ill, this can be obtained to some extent by rolling the patient and positioning a pillow under their right thorax. At times, this is very hard to do in a patient who is severely ill, surrounded by equipment, especially if the patient is obese, so that uh, this is a limitation of the view. It's probably the most challenging view of all the views related to goal-directed echocardiography. The fourth mandatory view for the goal-directed echocardiography exam is the subcostal view. Here the probe is moved to the subxiphoid position. The probe marker is directed to the patient's left and depth is appropriate to good image quality here. The axis requirement is that the ventricular cavities are largest in volume. This requires adjustment of the angle, the tilt, a little bit of movement of the probe. The main purpose of this view is to compare the size of the RV to the LV with the same rules that apply from the apical four position to look for pericardial fusion and to evaluate in long axis the LV function. Frequently, this is the best or even only view that can be obtained in the critically ill patient, particularly if they're hyperinflated or if they're on um, P, a large amount of PEEP. Let's go over the anatomy. We have the LV cavity, we have the RV cavity, we have the pericardial space, which is virtual in this situation. There could be some attempt made to visualize the atria. Sometimes that's difficult to line everything up just as it is with the apical four view. If the apical four view fails or during the goal-directed echo examination, this view, the subcostal view, gives you similar information as the apical four view. It's just that the uh, image is now horizontal in position instead of vertical in position. The fifth and last mandatory view of gold record echocardiography is to examine the inferior vena cava. To obtain this view, the probe is rotated approximately 90 degrees counterclockwise and then tilted and angled in order to obtain a longitudinal view of the inferior vena cava. Cava, the examiner attempts to image the IVC as it passes through the diaphragm. Let's review the anatomy here. We see the IVC in longitudinal view. We see the diaphragm as a uh, echogenic stru linear structure, and the IVC passes through the diaphragm into the right atrium. We also see part of the liver. The depth is set to appropriate level. The axis is acceptable, and the gain is also well set in this image. Primary reason to obtain this image is to attempt to identify preload sensitivity. 